Good morning, everyone. Um, one of the session I'll be touching on today is uh, testing protocols. And um, we've been working hard. Sport Canada has basically mandated us to test and track our athletes. And so we've been doing that for the last couple of years. Um, we've been doing some physical testing with the Canadian Sports Institute. And so we have great baselines with those tests. But the technical piece is something that we've been working on now for two years. And it is evolving. But uh, we ha we're starting to get some data on our athletes. And um, it's something that we want to continue. We're hoping to get some testing done on the tactical part, the mental part, life skills, and so on to help track our athletes and uh, get on track with the podium pathway with that. Um, one of the things we, is a, which is a good thing for us, for um, our athletes, is that we're able to give feedback to the coaches with this, with this data that we're collecting. It helps us with the gap analysis for our athletes. It helps track our athletes on a continuous basis. So we're going to get into our technical slash accuracy piece today on court. Um, we have four athletes that are going to help me today, two boys, two girls. We have four tests that we're going to be doing, and I'll be going over those tests, and we're going to get a boy and a girl to do each one of the, the four tests. So on that note, Brian, Stanley, Catherine and Wendy, if you want to come out. So yes, they, they kindly volunteered, not volunteered to come this morning, but uh, I thank them for that. Um, they've had a very good World Junior Championships. Uh, they're part of the National Junior Team, so I'm thrilled that you're able to see our best here as well today in this setting. Um, so I think it's Brian and Catherine that's doing the lifts first. Okay, so um, how we're going to set up this is uh, as far as the accuracy piece goes, you'll see some lines taped on the courts, and this is the areas of the court that they're going to be hitting into. So the first one we're going to be doing is lifts, and this is the area that, that we're, we're focused on for the lifts as far as the accuracy piece. Um, we have a two-point area and we have a one-point area. This is the golden spot back here, basically 30 centimeters from the back line and 50 centimeters out. And then we have two spots that we give so-called part value for. So we're going to give a one point value for these two spots and the same thing on the other side. So we'll be doing lifts forehand and lifts backhand and there's going to be 20 shots done, 10 on each side. And so that's the accuracy piece for the lifts as far as um, also grading, and this is what gets very interesting for us and also challenging sometimes for us is having that consistency. The accuracy piece is very straightforward. It's, it's in or it's out. The values are there. But we also want to give a value for the technique part. And so we have four areas that we look at, and that'll be for all the different tests. It's the, the movement to the shuttle, the preparation, the actual contact, and then the follow through afterwards. So we, we rank those out of 10 for each of those for a total score of a possible 40. And uh, where there's different things that we're looking for. For instance, movement to the shuttle, um, which foot moves first? Uh, are they here on the racket foot? How high are they, uh, how high are they getting ready to, to contact the shuttle? Those types of areas that we have. And, and by the way, I do have this information on a PowerPoint that I'm going to be sending to BWF. So if you would like that, it'll probably will be online with the presentation as well. So you can have all the, the data on the testing themselves, the, the numbers, and then also the, the pieces that we're looking for in rating or uh, scoring their technique as well. Um, so let's start with, say, Catherine on that side and on this on the lifts part I'm going to be on the other side on the lifts part basically the the shuttle will be tossed about this high from the net and coming down to about this spot this area and the athletes I normally give them two practice on each side and then again a total of 20 shuttles 10 on one side 10 on the other side 
And we, again, we'll have two people doing it, one boy, one girl, so that you get a good idea about that. And again, of course, if you do not remember all the pieces, it will be online as well. So I need uh, one person feeding. And, I, and what helps go, this go through in a group setting as well is we'll have spotters, one on one side, one on the other side. <coughs> so we'll start off with the two practice on each. And what, for Catherine, it isn't a, a sprint. Basically, she's going to come in, she's going to do her lift, she's going to come back to the middle, and then the next one, and then come back to the middle. Okay? Okay, four, the four practice. All right, so we're going to get started now. 20 shuttles in a row, 10 on each side. And what we're looking for, of course, like I was saying, first of all, the preparation, movement to the shuttle, and then the timing for the, for the shot itself, and then the, the recovery at the end. Okay, so now we're going to gather them up, and I think, Brian, you're up next on this one. <laughs> what we're trying to do with this testing as well, uh, myself and Andrew DeBecca, who, by the way, helped with the um, planning of all of this, um, but what we were hoping to do with this is getting the provincial coaches and club coaches to be involved. We test our athletes now twice a year. And, but we would love to get to test them four times a year at least. So this is where we're hoping the club coaches and provincial associations will get involved with our program. So then maybe they can have a testing day at their club and then give us that data as well. Okay. Okay. Part of this as well with your testing is some of the, some of the warm-up. We didn't have a lot of warm-up for this, getting our athletes here early, so I would, I would encourage also to do a bunch of practice before you, you start doing your testing so they feel comfortable with what's going on. These athletes have been tested with this before, so they are pretty comfortable with this, but if you haven't done this before, you can do some training and drills that involve these shots, so then when they do their testing, they're pretty comfortable with it. Go ahead. On the lifts, we, wanna, we do not want a really flat lift. It's not like a high single serve, but it is a lift that you're getting the, the opponent into that deep corner. Okay, so that is our first test that we're going to do. Now we're going to move on to drops. So we're going to switch players for this one. We're going to have Wendy and Stanley 
doing this one. Catherine, you want to feed for this one? So for this one, um, the player will be in the middle of the court. I'll get Wendy back there. And we're going to, not a long high single serve, but it's a shot that also the, per, the player has to go in the back corner. And for the drops, this is the area we're going to be looking at. 30 centimeters from the singles line to this line and 30 centimeters from the, the middle taped line to the end. And this, of course, is going to be our two-point zone. And 50 centimeters from this line to this line is the area that we feel we want to have a drop come in. So you'll see a bunch of athletes uh, still hit it back here, but we feel if we can incorporate that slow drop in with um, this area or a fast drop in this area is the optimum spot to hit. Okay, a couple of pra uh, four practice. So before Wendy starts, so what we want to see is, of course, for, for the technique part, starting there, going into the corner, and then coming back, though, after each shot to the middle, and then that's when Catherine will do the next shot. Okay, and Stanley, you're up. So you're for practice, Stanley. All set? Okay. And again, good movement in and out of those corners to the back to the middle. Okay, the next one we're going to be doing are clears, and we're back in the, of course, the backcourt area with the same parameters as the lifts, this being two points and these two spots being one point. And yes, we are looking for uh, 
around the head in that corner, in case you're wondering. <clears throat> okay, here we go. What is one of the interesting things about this data when we try to get other coaches involved with this is the, the scoring or the rating on the technical piece and then for us to be on the same page. And so far what we've done, we've, we've ranked them out of 10, but I've got some of the coaches that are here today actually have ha having helped with this testing in the past. And it's basically what for instance, Effendi may see is not exactly what I see in the, the scoring. And, and it's for us to, I guess, have the most detailed explanation of what we're looking for. But with that, there's always still some, some discrepancies. And that's what we are continuing to work through is uh, exactly, there's some technique that you'll see on the court today, for instance, in the semifinals that isn't exactly the same but is it still good quality? Is it still acceptable in the scoring is, is one of the pieces that we're, we're continuing to work through. Um, and then the scoring, whether it should be out of 10, four to make it more consistent uh, is, we continue to continually have that discussion on that. So um, for now, what we've gone with is out of 10. Um, I'm going to say we're in the ballpark with other th coaches that we have, but it's still something that, we're, that you'll see when you, if you do this testing or do other testing. If you have multiple coaches, what they see is maybe not exactly what you see. So we're, we put out great detail on what we're looking for or what should be looked at, but then at the end of the day, it's still going to be some subjectivity come into play. And that's something that... Um, we're striving to try to eliminate as much of that as possible, but it still exists in the program in the early stages. This is our second year of doing this. Okay. And the last one we're going to be doing is smash. And uh, the parameters for that one, we say at least 80% uh, 
um, effort in your smash. So uh, some of the athletes in the early stages of this would basically take, take a lot off their smash to make sure it went in. And that's not what this is about. This is about full smash and looking at the technique and giving feedback back to the coaches and the players about that. And at full smash, let's see how the accuracy goes. Okay. And our last demonstration, Stanley for Smash. <clears throat> Thank you, athletes. Um, we're just going to wrap up here a little bit before some, if you have any questions about this. Um, so we do these things twice a year, and then what we do with the data. So we do have a data tracking system, um, an information system that we put everything into. Um, so we have a great bank of an uh, area to, keep, to store that information. We, well, the information we give to the athletes, we give their own their scores, we give best scores, we give average scores, so they have some comparisons for themselves. The information also gets passed on to coaches, and um, I think that's one of the, bi the biggest pieces is to make that connection between the coaches. We don't work with these athletes on a daily basis. They have their personal coaches. So uh, myself and Andrew, as national coaches, we go around as much as we can to the clubs, but at the end of the day, it's the personal coaches that uh, work with them on the daily basis. So we get that information to them. We give them feedback on what we see in the different testings, whether it's so far physical testing and the technical testing. So they get that information, and that's going to help them set up training to help the gaps that we have identified based on some of the testing results that we see. Um, it is, like I said at the beginning of this lecture, um, 
Sport Canada does mandate this, and they are pleased in the direction that we're going, but they want more and more data, they want more and more tracking of the athletes. So uh, it is something that um, is going to happen for us, it's just what we want to keep expanding on what we're doing, and plus expanding on the different areas. Um, tactical testing is another area that we want to get into next, and we'll always keep evolving our tests. Uh, we've we keep changing based on the feedback that we get. We keep tweaking things, um, but we're going to keep going with what we've been doing so far, and we're pretty happy with the results uh, and the feedback that we've been given on this. Any questions on what you've seen today? Um, I will be, again, giving it to BWF, Rodrigo, and um, so you can get all of this um, online. Hi, uh, Anthony from Sherbrooke University in Quebec. Um, two questions. Yes. Um, what are your, your standards regarding the, the results? Well, that, that's an interesting one, and that's actually one of the pieces. For the physical testing, we do have many baselines to go from for that. The, there's many top athletes, Olympians, that have been tested for the physical piece. As far as this goes, um, Yes, we have our national senior team doing this as well. So that's a great comparison for the junior athletes and the younger ones. Um, the clubs, that would be, be great information for them as well to say, okay, you know what, this, the national senior team, this is their standard. The national junior team, this is their standard. Um, now, what comparisons do we have to make above that is something that we're working on. And actually, this is one of the reasons why I was so excited to do this session is to possibly get some feedback and connections with other countries and see what they're doing. So we do have our standards based on our best athletes, senior and junior, and we've been doing this now for two years only. This is actually a year and a half for the senior team, two years for the, for the junior team. So making comparisons right now for the, for the younger, weaker ones in, in our program, um, we do have some standards to compare, but as far as the senior team, um, we're, that's what we're in the process of doing, whether we're starting to look at video of some of the best athletes in the world and see online what they're doing, but uh, we're making connections as we speak from other countries to say, okay, you're doing this and trying to get information and, and communication with them. Good, thank you. Uh, next question. Um, uh, you, t you said that you, uh, you were also uh, evaluating uh, the, um, the preparation and uh, movement and technique. Yes. Uh, um, what is the, the feedback you give and the criteria you watch? So, yeah, so um, for each of those, we do have four different areas that we look at that we score. And that, again, movement to the shuttle, the, the, the preparation just before contact, and then contact, follow through, and recovery. So we have the four areas that we look at. Uh, I, that, the de more detailed explanation of each of those is uh, I, I'll be putting online as well. So you can read, like there's a paragraph on each one. Um, but then you can, like I said already, there's going to be some subjectivity with, even though, okay, here's all these things, and we're, but you and I are looking at it, and you may rank that one as a seven for this, or and I may rank it as an eight, um, and then, it's just maybe you're looking at something slightly different than me and some, some of the footwork may be slightly different. Um, and you'll see out there as well, some of the footwork is slightly different. Some of the technique is slightly different. Um, but are both wrong, both right? Um, you know, we've set standards, but of course there's, there's a gray area with that as well. Hi, Hi I'm uh, Victor from Ottawa. Uh, when you store the data, do you retain the details like points scored on the left side versus the right side, uh, whether the 1.1s are short or long or, or out to the side? Yeah, that's interesting. So when we first started, we basically took the total, and then we did see gaps. Okay, you know, one hit on the, on the forehand side, they scored, say, a 25 on the accuracy piece, and then they scored a 5 on the, on the other side. So right after the first testing, we did... Start, change that and we went and started taking results both sides. So we do store the data 10 here, 
on the forehand, backhand side, and that's in that system. I'm Sarah from Vancouver, and here. Oh, sorry. There and you are. Uh, have you done this for doubles as well, or it's just for singles? Um, we, we talked a lot about that. It's just an interesting question as well, because when we did this, what the, the feedback that we got from some of the players was, well, I'm a doubles player, so should this not be my area to hit, say, for the two-point, and this my area for the one-point? So um, we thought a lot about that, but um, and we may go to that someday, but for now, being in the early stages, we still felt its accuracy. So, okay, we want you to hit it to this spot on the court. So uh, for now, we're saying, okay, this is still this area, possibly because it makes it sim a little simpler, but um, we did discuss that area and we did get feedback saying, hey, well, I'm a doubles guy or girl, and I, this should, shouldn't this not be my area? So we, our, our, our response to that was, yes, we understand that and it may get to that point, but for now, yes, you sh we want you to hit the shuttle here. And whether it's a doubles player, singles player, um, for now, we're going with here, but we may someday in the future, maybe near future, go to here for a doubles person. Can I ask you one more question sure. about the feeders? Because that's important too, right? Yes, it is. Then how they feed and where, do you have any specific location for feeders yeah, or just? The, the feeding part, um, we did, we had some of our athletes be involved with some um, testing that the BWF did last year, and they actually had a feeder or machine, and I think that would probably be the most consistent, but not everybody has a feeding feeder part. So we basically get, and the other, other part, by the way, what we're, what we're um, doing is we're getting video on, on these pieces as well, so you're able to click on and actually see a demo for it and what happens with that. But typically, it should be around this area for feeding. I'm going to say approximately where you would normally stand for, say, a single serve is kind of the area that we do it, except for the, the lifts, which they'd come up a little bit closer, maybe to the line, and toss from here. Do you have any correlation data between this testing and game situation? Because game situation is under pressure, it's totally different. I, I, I understand that. We're, we're also going to be moving the pace of the testing up a little bit, but we still want to break down the technique. And part of our next steps are to look at video. And I understand that it's um, game situation is different. I, I get that. Um, but we also want to, the number one thing is about the technique, I believe. So we want to break that down. So if it's a slower pace, we're, we're able to analyze that a little bit better. Well, are, you, are you not able to correlate this against them clearing or smashing in a game situation? You know, if it's in or out and if they hit the spot or not, are you not able to correlate numbers? We're, we're presently looking at video as well to see um, making some comparisons, and that's going, to how, that's going to be some of our data to be able to compare what we're doing and the results that we have for, uh, with our athletes versus video analysis, which would be game situation. So that's... Thank you.